Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here aboard good old Athena. Last weekend I put up soundproofing in the inching compartment and this is what that looks like. I'd say that looks pretty dang spiffy, especially considering this is what it used to look like. As you can see, pretty crusty. Last weekend I also took apart and cleaned the heat exchanger and removed the exhaust elbow on my Volvo D240F. The exhaust elbow turned out to be pretty corroded. If I bring the camera closer, you might be able to see the little droplets here. Whatever that is, it keeps oozing out. I think it's safe to say this thing is toast. Turns out Volvo parts are pretty dang expensive, including this doodad. Fortunately, a lot of you guys left comments on my last video saying that I could pick up a third party stainless steel version of this in the US for about half the cost of the original part over here. Seeing as I'm gonna be spending Christmas with Ava, the timing is almost perfect. So I'm gonna bring back one of those stainless steel exhaust elbows and we'll see what that's like. I want to take a quick second to thank all of those of you who leave helpful tips and tricks and suggestions in the comments section. Your suggestions and your feedback and just reading the comments from you guys is a big part of what makes this fun for me. Now sadly I don't have time to reply to every single comment anymore, but still, thank you so much guys. Turning our attention to the green monster, the exhaust elbow is of course located right here. Now I won't have that for about a month, but there's still plenty of other fun to be had. This weekend, I hope to replace the diaphragm on the sail drive. That's this rubbery bit here that keeps water out of the boat. So needless to say, I better not mess this up. And also this weekend, I hope to get the sail drive mounted in the engine compartment and get the engine moved in there. But that's a pretty tall order. According to Volvo, the diaphragm needs to be replaced every seventh year or if damaged. Now there is no damage here, but this thing is around 10 years old. There are plenty of examples of people going 10, 15, 20 years without replacing their diaphragms and being perfectly fine. But considering Volvo's recommendation and also the fact that I've already got the engine out of the engine compartment, I might as well go ahead and replace it. Although I am not a mechanic, I feel somewhat prepared to do this. I've found good detailed instructions online. I've bombarded a new buddy of mine with a ton of questions and I've picked up a new fancy tool. Ta-da! A spiffy torque wrench. This is a 10 to 60 Newton meter version. Now I know to a lot of you guys, a torque wrench is not particularly interesting, but this is my first ever torque wrench. Before ordering this particular model, I checked the workshop manual and all the bolts I'll be tightening are supposed to be between 10 and 40 Newton meters. And like I mentioned, this is 10 to 60, so this should be perfect for the job. This was around $80, but figuring that this will give me a better chance of not messing up this job and also that I might be able to recoup some of that cost on future repairs, well, I think it's a good investment. I've ordered a kit from Volvo that contains a new diaphragm, a gasket, and some O-rings that you also need to replace when replacing the diaphragm. The bad news is that kit seems to be stuck somewhere in Germany right now. Fortunately, today is only Wednesday, so we've got another couple of days until the weekend. So fingers crossed it gets here. I guess sometimes crossing your fingers helps. At least I am very hopeful that this yellow package here is that diaphragm kit. Let's take a quick look at what's included in this kit. First, there is instructions. There's some here for various models of sail drives. There's a gasket here, O-ring, this doodad that goes on the outside of the boat, the diaphragm itself, and what the heck? Another gasket of some sort. I didn't know this kit came with instructions. That's pretty cool. But to be prepared, I also printed out the uh, instructions from the workshop manual and some other instructions I found online. For a noob like me, it is pretty cool that the kit comes with instructions. That certainly makes everything a little bit more manageable. But, yep, I think that is what we'll be doing. 
I pointed specifically to this one because that's the type of sail drive I've got here aboard Athena. It's a 130S. Seeing as I've already gone through the trouble of removing the engine and the sail drive, let's just jump right in. Ooh. Fingers crossed, this turns out not to be a pain in the behind. It looks like the first step is to loosen these five bolts on either side of the drive. In an attempt to not mess this up, I've made a little drawing here and put each of the bolts on the corresponding dot on the sail drive. Now there are only two sizes of bolts, this one and this one, so this might be overdoing it a little bit, but better safe than sorry. The instructions don't mention how you pull the lower part and the upper part apart, but uh, let's just give it a go. That was surprisingly easy. If I flip this around, you should be able to see one of the gaskets in the kit. That's this one right here, but let's put this aside for now. Next up, it looks like we need to remove these two. I should be able to remove this now and with it should come the old diaphragm. There's a total of four O-rings here to be aware of. There's the big one here, and then there are three tiny ones here, here, and here. When opening up the kit, I noticed that it doesn't seem like there is a replacement for the three tiny O-rings, which seems kind of odd. But, uh, let's just double check to make sure. That's the big one. That is for securing some of the bolts, but I didn't see that on mine, which is kind of odd. It's, it's in the instructions. And then there's this gasket. Nothing else in there. Another O-ring. I don't know if we'll actually need this. Oh! I think maybe this could be the explanation. See, this kit covers multiple versions of sail drives, so maybe the smaller O-rings are... Oh, yep, look at that. So this is kind of odd. Two of the smaller O-rings are green and the last one is black. The old smaller O-rings were all black. Hmm. Okay, mystery solved. Thanks to some input from my behind the scenes mechanic. Turns out these O-rings are not the same size. The middle one is just ever so slightly smaller than the other two. And that's why they're now color coded. Pretty cool, but also pretty dang annoying. It's of course only annoying because the manual does not mention that there are two different kinds of O-rings. So thanks Volvo, but let's forge ahead. With the O-ring mystery solved, I think we should go ahead and give this a little bit of a clean. Everything is nice and clean. Let's go ahead and get started putting everything back together again. So there's the three little O-rings here and each one of those are going to get a little dab of grease just to help hold them in place. And the black one goes in the middle. Oops, we better not forget this guy. It would be super duper awesome if I could mount this the right side up in the first go. Luckily there is a big sticker here, I'm assuming that goes up. And also if we look along the edge here, it says Volvo and it says year 2018. That's when this was manufactured. So. Let's go ahead and put that side up. 
If memory serves, this goes on like this. The two bolts get a little bit of grease. And I think it's time to get out the fancy torque wrench. Turns out I wasn't over prepared anyway, so it's a good thing I printed out these sheets from the workshop manual, because the manual that came with the kit doesn't tell you how much to tighten these, but the workshop manual does. 22 newton meters. I am really glad I picked up this thing. I mean, even if I don't use it for anything else, it still takes the guesswork out of something like this, which is very comforting when you're a big noob like me. Now there's just a small matter of replacing this gasket and then bolting everything back together again, of course. But I think replacing this gasket might very well end up being the most annoying part of this job. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but I've put a tiny dab of grease here, here, and here just to help secure the gasket while I put the two parts of the sail drive together. Okay, fingers crossed this works out. Well, it looks like I managed to make a mess of this. I thought there wasn't any more oil left in the sail drive. Apparently, I was wrong. The silver lining to the fact that I made a bit of a mess there has to be the fact that the gasket got a good soaking of oil, which I'm sure is not a bad thing. Each one of these gets a little drop of grease. All the 10 bolts are in, but none of them are tightened yet, because apparently for this you're supposed to do it in a cross pattern, just like you would with a car tire. Only for this, Volvo has gone through the trouble of telling you the order of which to do it in. As you can see, you're supposed to start here on the inside and do those first before moving on to the two outside ones. I'm just gonna snug all of them up first before tightening them. That wasn't actually that bad of a job. Of course, now I just have to hope I did not mess it up. I guess we're ready to take a stab at mounting the sail drive and the engine tomorrow. That is gonna be awfully exciting. But uh, for now, I'm gonna head back and get some dinner and uh, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. It is a beautiful Saturday morning and I am very excited for today. In fact, so excited that I had a hard time falling asleep last night. So let's sit up and get started. My fellow liveaboard, the amazing cement boat guy, has promised he'll swing by later today and help me with the physical act of dragging the engine into the engine compartment. I'm hopeful I'll be able to move the sail drive into the engine compartment on my own, but before I attempt that, there are just a few things I want to take care of in the engine compartment. The first one is to cover up the seams between the sheets of soundproofing. To do that, I've got some aluminum tape. This should be very straightforward. The difference might not be that noticeable on camera, but all of the seams are now taped. I noticed a couple of comments on my last video suggesting I should tape these exposed edges of foam, and I totally get the thought behind that. I just have not found a good way of doing that yet because the aluminum tape does not stick to the foam. Simply adhering this to the front and the back seems like it has a couple of drawbacks, so I'm holding off on taping these until I've found a better method. Next item on the list is to make a hole where you see that blue piece of masking tape that's so that the engine can draw in air. 
Perhaps not the neatest hole ever, but at least it is there. The reflective foil tends to tear a bit, so that's why it's looking a little uneven along the edges. Now there is just one last little thing to take care of, that is to remove the masking tape that's covering up the threaded holes here where the engine sits and where the sail drive sits. I don't know if this is needed, but I did a fair bit of sanding and other dusty stuff in here, so I figured it might be a good idea to just clean the threads. Super smooth. Last winter, when I removed the engine and the sail drive, every little bit that was attached to them got carefully put away. So this should be everything we need to mount the sail drive. The sail drive is somewhat unhandy and a little bit heavy, so I would much prefer not to drag it in and out of the engine compartment a lot of times. In the spirit of that, I have done a quick test fit with this ring, and it doesn't fit over the sail drive, so I'll have to put this on before bringing the sail drive into the engine compartment. It's time to give this a go. I'm gonna pick the sail drive up, carry it into the engine compartment, tilt the top of it towards the aft end of the boat. That way, hopefully I can get the leg of the sail drive through the bottom of the boat. And if that succeeds, well, then I should be golden. Whew. Phew. It is in there, but I am not going to lie, that feels like it would have been a lot easier with two people. The next step before I secure the sail drive is to get the engine in here. But uh, that is significantly heavier. Okay. Yep. Yes, the engine is back in place. A great big thank you to Cement Boat Guy. I would not have been able to do that on my own. All that remains now is to tighten the bolts and to patch a few holes in the sound insulation. As you can see, I've already patched the first hole over here. I mean, this stuff is pretty easy to poke through, so this was just a matter of time. All the bolts down here that secure the diaphragm are going to get a little dab of blue Loctite. It looks like all of the bolts here along the diaphragm gets tightened to 20 newton meters, with the exception of the two aftmost bolts, which gets tightened to 40 newton meters. Space is certainly at a little bit of a premium in here, but I mean, it's much better than Obelix. And just like that, it is done. The engine is back in the engine compartment. And you know what? If I launched Athena right now, she would actually float. That is a pretty major milestone. Before ending this video, there is a little bit of a fun story I was reminded of when fiddling around with the engine. When I purchased Athena, there were some things I wanted to take care of before leaving Scotland. So I wanted to change the impeller, change the oil filters, change the oil. So before going to pick Athena up, I emailed the previous owner and asked him what type of oil the sail drive used. It took a few days for him to get back to me. When he did, he said ATF, automatic transmission fluid. But while waiting for him to reply, I had actually found a Volvo manual saying that you're supposed to use the same oil you use in the engine. So I wrote back to him and was like, are you sure you're using ATF in the sail drive? To which he responded, yes, ATF, just as the manual says. 
which left me kind of puzzled because I just read the manual and it said to use engine oil. We went back and forth a number of times and I'm pretty sure we were both scratching our head going, why doesn't this moron just like learn how to read? The manual clearly states to use what I'm telling him to use. Long story short, it turns out he was looking at the printed manual that came with the engine when he purchased it in 2009, while I was looking at a much newer version of that manual I downloaded from the internet. Apparently sometime in between 2009 and 2016 when I purchased Athena, Volvo updated their recommendation on what kind of lubricant to use in the sale drive. Gah! And I don't know if any of you noticed it, but on the side of the sale drive, there's a little red sticker that says ATF only. Well, that sticker is a big fat lie. I know it's not a laughing out loud kind of story, but it always makes me smile because it's one of those aha moments where everything just makes sense when you find that little piece of the puzzle that in this case were two different versions of the same manual. And now for something completely different. This guy. This is a Panasonic GH5. I was able to pick this up thanks to my awesome patrons. For the last two years I've been using Panasonic GH4 cameras to shoot these videos. This one is one that died after lots of epoxy, lots of dust and being dropped a couple of times. It's gonna take me a little bit of time to get used to this new Panasonic GH5. I haven't started shooting videos with it yet. I'm still getting to know it. But once I start using it for the videos, you guys should be able to notice a little bit of a bump in video quality. I'm very excited about the features in this camera, but this is not really a camera channel, so I'm not gonna bother you with the details. This is just a very long-winded way of saying thank you so much to my awesome patrons. And that's about it for what I planned for this video. Next weekend I'm gonna remove this bulkhead here in between the old head and the aft cabin. I'm also gonna remove the cabin sole so we can take a closer look at the structural members down there. Remember the uh, joker from my to-do list? Some of those structural members will need to be replaced and hopefully next weekend I can figure out how bad the damage is. Needless to say, I am very excited to figure out the condition of those structural members because as I've mentioned earlier, if I need to replace all of them, well, then I'm gonna have to gut the entire boat. So uh, fingers crossed it doesn't come to that. But uh, yeah, I think that is gonna be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.